welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, pick Guardian. Jared Brandon. I'm still not Jared used Brandon. to. There you go. Okay. Hey, everybody. It's me, Todd Novak. Welcome to the Guitar Knobs podcast. We are thrilled to death that you are listening to our little rowboat amongst the 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 freighters of a show wow <laughs> i guess so I, I think we're bigger than a rowboat. okay two rowboats tied together with, with a one sail. oar with a mast yes betwixt us we have a, a mast on one side and a sail on the other that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> probably that, yes <laughs> and a three-wheel bicycle and a, oh, and yeah, with, with the carriage in the <laughs> yeah. back for todd uh we're really excited today because we've got some uh guests Ooh. in the studio and the guess studio? who are you in our studio yeah what year is this in studio together. i know right uh you've got bill here from thimble wasp effects and okay. uh i handle most of our enclosure designs uh if we uh in talk on Facebook or Instagram or something like that, you're probably talking to me. Nice. And then I got my partner here. He's the uh, brains behind the circuit operation. Okay. Uh, this is Phil, Thimble Wasp Effects. Yeah, I do the uh, electronic design and building. Excellent. So, so what, what brings you guys so wait, to wait, Columbus? Wait, wait. So it's Thimble Wasp Effects. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just make sure. Besides Bill and Phil, we've got Thimble Wasp Effects yes. in, in the studio. And Can, what's unique about this what? is where are we, Tony? I am in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm in Columbus, Ohio. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. We're all in Columbus, Ohio, except for I'm Jared. Not. Jared's not in. So this, we've got a native builder here. That's the exciting thing. Yeah. So. Let's do it. Yes, yes, yes. I got it. I'm getting a thing that says political call. What if, uh, <laughs> no. what if somebody wants to check out their wares? Yes, where would they go to see what you guys can do? Yeah, what's the website? <clears throat> uh, thimblewasp.com. Uh, spelled just how you would think. Thimble Wasp. Yes. How about the uh, Instagram? Yep. Check us out on Instagram. We're also on Facebook. We're also on TikTok. All right. So we're going to have a lovely time. We've got three of their pedals in front of us. Yes. This is going to be super fun. Um, we've got. We're going to have two four on the floors, or as Tony just said, and I'm going to I'm going to let him do it now. So you can get it out of the way. Go ahead. Eight on a plate. All right. Eight on a plate. Um, and then we're going to find out all about uh, where they're getting their ideas and what's inspiring them and all that good stuff. And uh, we've got Jared over in Tennessee and we've got you wherever you are. And we're grateful that you are with us right now hanging out. Yeah. Um, let's see here. we got a couple of announcements. Please. Uh, speaking of four on the floor. Yeah. We've got one that I wanted to share from... Uh, this is going to be from Ben Harder, okay? And uh, he said, uh, my favorite segment is four on the floor. I'm a pedal addict, and I currently am putting together a new board. I got a great deal on a Schmidt Array. That's those, like, super-duper expensive, really nice ones. Uh, but so far, it is a wiring nightmare. I'm about to order those tour gear design patch cables. Yes! I, yeah. Order them! Order them! Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> or else Tony's going to fall out of his chair. As That's far right. as my four on the floor, I'd have to go with the Origin FX Revival Drive. Oh, that's some chunk mm -hmm. of change right there. Uh, and sounds very good for yes. a good reason. Yes. Uh, the Strymon Volante. Hmm tasty the chase bliss mood that's one that i can appreciate people might be like oh man this is the pedal i need i gotta say i would have i don't believe i would have any use for that pedal if only it had a few more switches a few more but i i think that we'll, makes some beautiful sounds uh and the collision devices black hole symmetry a destructive fuzz reverb and delay all in one box it was so difficult to pick only four Honorable mentions go to the B-Tronics Vespa and the Jam Pedals Harmonious Monk. Man, you've got some mighty fine and, might I say, top shelf taste. Oh. Well, those will pair nicely with the Tour <clears throat> Gear Design cables. Indeed. Indeed. Well, thanks, Ben, for sending that in. We love hearing uh, your four on the floors, and we're uh, happy to get them shared. 
Well, let me, let me ask you this about uh, Ben yeah. here. Uh, considering the uh, new uh, guitar combination with the, is it the mood? The mood. Yeah. Oh. That might buy him an extra choice. So it could. Yeah. We're going to have to. Uh, I can't imagine how expensive that guitar is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all relative. Yeah, I guess it is. So anyways, we also have another DM and it's a message. Someone sent us a nice message and I wanted to share it. I uh, said, uh, dear Tony, Todd, Jared and Rob, after stumbling on your podcast this year, I've fallen in love with you and the content you're producing every week. With that said... I'm a new father to a one-year-old and uh, just found out that we have another due next year. Hey, oh, a cup. Well, mm. congratulations. That's what I should yes. say. Like, yeah. oh, that's fantastic <laughs> news. What am I doing? I've already had this. You know, we I had a little bit of back and forth with him about this. Yes. That's that's super exciting. Fatherhood's like the greatest thing on the planet um, to me. <laughs> uh, a couple of episodes ago, Todd May mentioned that he really doesn't purchase much gear as he is a father and a, uh, to a, has a family and to think about and where to best spend his money. My last show was five years ago here in St. Louis, and I haven't touched my guitar since. Ugh. Mm. Your podcast makes me want to get back into playing, but I would like to get my first tube amp and a couple additional pedals and a breakaway from the big companies. This has me at a standstill. I bought my first guitar uh, on my own back in 2004. It's a 2003 PRS Custom 2210 top in whale blue. Now, I got to admit, I'm not, I don't know all the, the scales of um, the PRS ratings. I'm, that sounds really high. I don't know. Yeah, 10 top is like the most figured. 10 top, that, I kind of figured that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> see what I did. No, you are so smart. Uh, yes, I own one guitar. Anyways, do you have any tricks to scoring deals on new or used gear while being a responsible parent? Thank you again for providing such a great outlet for me to live vicariously through you all every week. Sincerely, John Sluhan, pronounced like St. Louis University's abbreviation of SLU and Han, or Han, Ham, like Ham with an N. Han, Han. Sluhan. I should have read that ahead, like again ahead of time to make sure. Anyways, now Tony and Jared are hungry. <laughs> That's why the ham. Uh, ham. Uh, I already had a crumble cookie, man. It was pretty good. Yeah. Those, if you have a full crumble cookie, tell you what, before, right. before, you should just go talk to Crumble Cookie and see if they'll sponsor us, so that you know. Yeah, okay. four on a floor or eight on a plate. Yeah, um, that's right. Crumble no. cookie, baby. Anyways, we really appreciate what that. Thank you, John. On the cookies would be. Yeah, you could go go work that out. Yeah. Um, yep. Okay, so we need to find out what's going on in our music world this week, uh, gentlemen. How this works, uh, and any of our f- first time listeners, what what we're gonna do is just share a little tiny bit. A little tiny bit. Before a we morsel, do that, Todd, a crumb. Can we what? tell people what we do on you this podcast? Go ahead. Thank do you. Do it. I have the floor. You've got the floor. I mean, the gentleman with the sweatshirt has the floor. The gentleman with the sweatshirt. The s- <laughs> Don't talk about sweaty shirt. Um, no, we like to talk about gear, mm-hmm. specifically boutique gear. Mm-hmm. Even more specifically, the people that make the boutique gear. Mm-hmm. We've interviewed hundreds, hundreds of well, people, well over two hundred from all around the world. Yeah, the movers and the shakers. Mm-hmm. Occasionally, we do a one hundred and one where we learn stuff. And we have a very special one. I need you to write out. our wiki bio, man. <laughs> <laughs> which we really actually need to do. Wiki. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. We, you know, we we have two gentlemen here that happen to be from Columbus, Ohio, but we've had people from everywhere. Yes. All That's over the world. That's a nice place. I visited there. It was delightful. Yeah, it was delightful this time of year. Everywhere, mm-hmm. man. But yeah, you, know, you know, we talk gear. You've we established talk to the that. People. Thank it's you. very simple. I appreciate that. Okay, uh, so speaking of that, uh, Tony, why don't you go ahead and, and give us a, a little, uh, you know, jog on your memory about what you did in your music world this week, and then we're going to hop over to Phil and Bill. Okay. Well, this just happened yesterday, so it's fresh in my memory. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Um, I've always wanted to improve my fret leveling and dressing skills. And yesterday, um, I had two necks that I'm putting together a couple of guitars for. And um, I asked my buddy Sean over at the Guitar Repair Company if 
I could come to his shop, use his tools, and he can show me what to do. So uh, being the gentleman and scholar that he was, he said, sure, come on over. So I did and uh, spent a couple hours over there leveling frets, dressing frets on these two necks, learning. I've always liked the way Sean has dressed and leveled frets for me. Um, and I, it's not like I'm some sudden expert or anything, but I did He's learn really a lot. Yeah, I mean, the, the way that um, his methodology and everyone that works on guitars and does fret work is slightly different. He tends to be a little more anal retentive than a lot of people, but the end product is well worth it, and the frets just feel great. So he, he just, you know, clued me in on a couple of tips and showed me what to do, and, and I was really happy. And that was, you know, again, it, you can't, it's, you're, it's tough to teach old dogs new tricks, but I learned some new tricks yesterday. Hmm. Well, all right. I just had Sean set up my bass. Yeah, oh, he's a good okay. dude. Yeah, we talked a lot about pedals too. Oh yeah, Sean's a good guy. Yeah, he uh, was handing it back to me. And he said the E sounds a little weird, a little hollow, and so he just snipped it off and put a new one on right then and there. Yeah. He said sometimes the strings which, come off the which shelf. Which bass was bit. yours? Uh, it was a dark gray P bass. Oh, okay. The, no, he had this other one that was had like a perloid <laughs> top on it that was was really crazy and was giving him fits, but. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, if that was yours. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right, uh, Phil, anything going on in your music world this week? Uh, this week was a little bit less music-centric. I had my floors refinished, so I was moving stuff mm. out and moving stuff in a lot of the time, but I did have to take a break in there and put together. I finally got some PCBs made to make a little buffer with the switch on it for uh, be good for testing how does the buffer affect this pedal before or after it to have a little toggle switch to turn it on or bypass it. Nice. That's kind of fun. So how, what, do you have oak floors? Yeah, white oak and a little bit of red mixed in. That's nice. Yeah. And uh, what, uh, what part of town are you in? Uh, actually pretty close to Sean's shop there. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So you're more in 71. Beach walled area. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, that's good. Very fun. Were you able to breathe? You know, it was a water-based year thing, oh, and it wasn't bad. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of companies have switched over that. Mm-hmm. On this week's Floor Finishing Podcast. <laughs> More on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely on the floor. <laughs> nice. Excellent. How about, uh, how about you there, Bill? Well, on Thursday, I went and saw the band Pine Grove play mm. at the uh, Anatherium. Is that how you say it? Have Anthonium. You guys, Anthonium. Have you guys Anth- been to Anthonium. the Anthonium? It, uh, it it looks like the type of place you would have a ping pong tournament of some sort. Uh, you know, it's got very high rise bleachers on oh, the side cool. and then kind of an open area in the middle. There's not a bad seat in the house. But uh, I was fully expecting to hear uh, like a pedal steel guitar, yeah. uh, which it sounds like uh, they're playing on the recordings. But uh, when they showed up, it was a guy with a volume pedal on a slide. And I thought to myself, man, I have got to get my slide game. Mm, up wow. to par. I haven't had a, a slide and probably since I was 16 years old. It was a glass slide. I didn't have a case for it, and it shattered inside my Ooh. soft gig bag or Ooh. something. Haven't had a slide since, but uh, it was pretty inspiring. So, Very cool. Yeah, there's some. there are a lot of people out there, um, smaller companies that are actually making custom slides, and uh, they make some really artistic kind of things, and uh, you might check the, some of those people out. Mm. I've yeah. always wanted to try the the single finger slides. You yeah, know, that one of those smaller ones that doesn't you know wrap around the whole damn finger. I thought you were talking about like uh, you had been using like a a slide mitt or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bare, they barely like the only or a pickle jar. He's using a pickle on. jar. <laughs> yeah, I mean He's they got big hands. He's a big dude. For, they're for they're all for people with small hands. I use a mayonnaise uh, jar on my finger. No kidding, man. <laughs> Bud Light can or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, you should try it out. I mean, you should learn, Jared. Yeah, I've tried a few. I, I could do a few songs here and there, and and uh, I've actually used one playing out and uh, doing. Um, heck, I even forgot the song. It was an Allman Brothers song, but anyway. Well, hmm. been a long time. Yeah, I wonder why. I think maybe I might get my uh, uh, slide out too. Could always use the mic stand. That's true. Yeah, 
Uh, he cut he it, picks his teeth with that. No, no, on stage, grab one hand with the... <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Yeah. I'll pull that off. Jared, how about yourself? What's going on in Music Roll this week? Oh, so I went on a field trip today to a few guitar shops, and I saw that weird Ampeg bass guitar thing, and I was hoping maybe Tony knew something about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've seen those before, and I'm not sure if they are... Um, it literally looks like a violin. Well, I, and I think it has a telescoping rod on it, too. That's weird. I mean, it, you know, it, it's kind of like Gibson made a violin bass that had that telescoping rod on it, too. So you could use it as a, a you know, play it like an upright. And that's well, essentially I mean, what that is. Yeah, I mean, when I saw it, I thought... You know, did a genie try to turn a a violin bass into an electric bass, like a Fender style, and only get halfway I, there? I bet that's exactly I what happened. I think that's exactly what happened. But that's not really what happened in my... I mean, it <clears throat> did happen, but... What a, a he, wouldn't, he wouldn't be able what'd to you, do that to a get, guitar. What'd you get? It looks like a Telemacaster. Yeah, so I bought a guitar at the Sam Ash... And uh, oh! it is the Jimmy Page the Tele Dra Dragon Tele Dragon. Wow. Wow. Jared, good for you, buddy. Yep. Show it, show it again. Don't play it. Show it. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. With the holographic yes. pick guard. Wow. Yeah, it's, nice. It actually sounds really, really good. I plugged it in at the uh, guitar store and I was uh, anticipating a real thin sounding bridge pickup and it actually sounded pretty good Do you, i was impressed with it well since you're the pickup guy i mean yes aside from the graphics this is a you know basically to spec from what i understand to jimmy's yeah, original I mean, one is that what do you know what the differences are on the on the pickups um if what do you mean difference it, like between well i mean i don't know really if the, yeah like if if that was set to spec like w w was there anything unique is especially unique about that particular one yeah, so the original, I think the the original guitar was a late fifties, and I don't remember exactly what year. So they would come with a black bottom bridge pickup, uh, standard telly, and he actually has, or had, or has one of the two, a gray bottom. I believe it's a sixty four or sixty five pickup in that guitar. Oh, and if. And what he did was he he found some uh, random magnets, a few of them were refrigerator uh, magnets, and stuck them on the bottom of the brass ah. base plate that goes underneath the pickup. No kidding. Did that increase the magnetic bloom? Uh, actually, no. Dot com. It, it, I own that, it by the way. Have, it may have... <laughs> Slightly changed a few things, maybe, but as far as the actual all Nico magnets, um, you cannot increase the magnetic bloom and the power through an all Nico five, um, no matter what. I mean, you only only the maximum power that they usually put out is what they can only put out. It doesn't matter what you put put behind it. Hmm. So no, but it. What's the point of doing have, that then? Uh, Jimmy did. I don't know. Uh, maybe Jimmy thought whatever. Ex extra I mean, maybe, mojo. Maybe it did something. It, yeah, maybe it uh, it did change the overall magnetic magnetic bloom surrounding the whole pickup itself. I'm not sure. It may have not made a difference because it, it was so, you know, far under the strings. I'm not sure. Hmm. But you would need one of those computer wave testy thingies to actually see if it made a huge difference or not you know I like a sound wave thing yeah, yeah totally. Sound, you sound, totally sound wave thing now, com. Uh, uh, yeah. was that right. i've always heard that pages um telecaster was originally sid barrett's from the pink floyd uh at the time as it were it was pink floyd yeah um and because Sid had a Telecaster that he played, had the mirrors and everything on it. Was that, do you know if that, that is the case or is, is that know? I don't know. All right. I don't know a lot about the Telecaster because everybody really cares about the, 
Les Paul, you know, 59 Les Paul he got from Joe Walsh. That's what that's the biggie. That's what everybody cares about the most. Yeah, but the Telecaster is what was on the first two or three Zeppelin albums. In and studio a lot albums. of people don't even know that or realize that, which is really interesting. But uh yeah, I mean, I uh I don't know. I guess you guys asking me these questions kind of uh, is inspiring me to find out the truth behind you it. You are correct. The magic of the internet. So. Uh, Peter Page. So so uh, he got he got the uh, that actual Telecaster, which was covered in mirrors. There's a picture of him playing it with a bow, really, really early on. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said uh, it says uh, Page would later give this guitar a makeover and turn it into his famous Dragon Telecaster. He would eventually use on the solo for Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven. There you and, go. And wow. there's uh yeah, that's uh, pretty remarkable. So uh, Tony, not with, only... t- that's see, that's why he's on the show, everybody. Just a general, <laughs> just a general reminder. He knows all. So not only is the guitar awesome, but it came with all sorts of awesome case candy. It came with a white seatbelt strap, I guess. Um, he used uh, a red coily cord, nice, um, and some other. Uh, are, case you gonna, candy are you going to do I that all? Dial that all in. Uh, yeah, That's I mean, cool. I'll probably leave the case candy alone. I'm not going to open the packaging and all that stuff. But um, as far as the setup, yeah, it needs new strings. I think it sat on the the hanger for a while. Are you um, going to get a, a a pair of real wide bell bottoms jeans? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, white ones with a dragon pattern <laughs> like on it. the sides and <laughs> nice. my big fat gut hanging out of the jacket. Oh boy! Like you're not even going to be able to to close the jacket. Yeah, it's kind of like the Elvis um, suit. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's already, like, finish checking on the neck. It's like a nitro finish huh. uh, neck, and I'm really uh, really impressed with this that's, guitar. That's I, a cool had, guitar. They Great had score. that at NAMM. They, yeah. they released it at NAMM. Yeah. I was like, wow. In 19, I mean, my booth was right around the corner from... Yeah. I, I, they had one, like, in a random window on the outside of their booth wall, Yep. and I had to stare at it the whole NAMM. And that's awesome. I'm so stoked you got that, man. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Todd, what's yes. going on in you, your music world? Well, this it's week? not. It's it's really simple, actually. I was using for a long time, been using SIT strings, which I have liked uh, very very much. Um, They're from Akron. They are from Akron. Um, Akron. And uh, I, yeah, I, I had I had uh, a good time using them. They were. I don't think I ever broke a single string, and I was breaking all kinds of other strings. Eb. On my new guitar that I got from Gullet Guitar Co., mm-hmm. I said, Chase, what, what strings are on these? He said, D'Addario, nickel wound tens, just a regular regular nickel wound tens. And I was like, okay, I'm switching. Pretty damn good strings. I love the way they feel. And it could be just, you know, a little bit about shampoo, everybody. <laughs> So, so I worked in, in, in uh, for several years, years, I worked with a lot of shampoo brands. And one of the biggest reasons that people... One of the only reasons that people tend to change shampoo is because their senses get numb to the scent. So when you get a new scent, it feels, it seems like it's working better. My shampoo, my new shampoo works better. It tingles. It, it must be working. It just smells different. Mostly. Mostly. Not all, but mostly. And that's that's like, you know, a totally research driven. That's not some cockamamie thing that somebody came up Does with. Does the so. same go for conditioner? Yeah. Anyhow, so it was kind of like, you know, I don't this these strings don't smell any different, but I really do love the way that they're playing, so I'm going to get a whole bunch more. So there you go. That's uh that's my very well, short musical week. That that's short but yes. sweet. And uh speaking of that, hey Todd. Yes, Tony. You know, earlier you were d- discussing an interesting four on the floor from one of our listeners. Yes. And he he wanted those tour gear designs. Uh, that's a that's a good move on his part. I think it's very smart for a number of reasons. Yes. Why? Would you like to know? I'd l- give me one good reason. One good reason. Uh, they're affordable. That's a great reason. That's maybe the best. I mean, look, let's be serious. That that's one of the best. It, it, some patch cables. It, it, it you can mortgage. It's like a house mortgage. I don't understand why. Well, yeah, they're I mean, crazy I, I expensive. I typically for some only reason. use the twenty four karat gold plated. Well, ones. Th- well, they sound better. <laughs> uh, these are fantastic. Uh, we stand behind them. Jared's got them. I got them. Tony got them. These guys are gonna get them. Bill and Bill are gonna. 
They're, they're going to load up on him. 100. I love it. He's um, buying 100. We, you heard it here first. Folks. That's right. <laughs> uh, so what you can do is go over to tourgeardesigns.com. And you know what? Uh, Tony, you confirmed. You can just go into the discount thing and put in. Type in the. The guitar knobs. Guitar knobs. And you can save 10%, 10 on your whole order. 10% on an already Yay. affordable. And, you know, we, we, we talk you about the price. You can buy like five of those cables for some that charge like for one cable. But beyond that. Yeah. They are rugged. Rugged. They are flat. Yes. They are designed to be flexible. They are. I mean, in terms of how you connect yes. various and, pedals and together. And the best part about it is that they tell you how good you're actually playing. They whisper to you. Go over to tourgeardesigns.com uh, and get your get your The Guitar Knobs discount. The Guitar Knobs, save 10%. Thank you for Tour Gear Designs for sponsoring our four on the floor. Or eat on the plate today. Jared. Let me get a little of this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. One, two, one, two, three. Four on the floor. Okay, we got Symbol Wasp in our studio, and we need to hear from Phil. Phil, what is your four on the floor? All right, I'm going to go with a pretty functional set here. Uh, first, an overdrive. Uh, probably my favorite overdrive would be the Honeybee from Born Jewel uh, or Barefoot, as you might ah, know, or yes. now One ah. Control. Yeah. Um, yeah, I find it to be very uh, touch sensitive and warm and uh, just melts with your amp. And I play a Telecaster, so it kind of like warms up that sound. Like exclusively a Telecaster? Well, I have a Strat and a Les Paul and Telecaster, where the Telecaster gets the most playing. Right. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then after that, it would be in the Dirt family, I like the Scarab Deluxe pedal. It is, I find it to be right kind of in the middle of a distortion and a fuzz. You can get some hard rock, like nice aggression with it or some fuzzy textures with a little bit of gating. And that's a Scarab Deluxe? Yeah, basic audio. Okay. Yeah, so it is kind of a modded tone bender with silicon transistors. Oh. And then it's got five mm. knobs. So gain volume, a bass and a treble knob, and then a bias knob. And the bias really, you can get right. some gating with it. You can really get a noise gate where it's completely silent. But then it kind of muffles your sound, which can be cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or you can have it kind of wide open like a more traditional distortion. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Number three. All right. Uh, harmonic tremolo. So the one I have is only available as a DIY kit, but there's a lot out on the market. Uh, mine is a cardinal tremolo, and it has a switch for normal tremolo and harmonic. So... You know that the Cardinal is Ohio State bird, dude. Yeah, I do. Yes. I know a lot of them. Does that have day. anything to do with the name of it? Yes. Oh. I don't know if the designer's no. from Ohio. Probably not. <laughs> okay. Probably not. Um, I like harmonic tremolo because it gives you just a little mild flavor of univibe mm. to it, but not nearly as intense as a univibe, but just a little more interesting than a typical tremolo. I heard a great explanation of a harmonic tremolo, which is kind of one of those things that, like, I've heard several. I'm like, nope, nope, don't, I don't, nope, don't get it. I'll and take then I a heard stab this one. It. Do you want to take a stab? Because once you, you get yours. it, you're like, oh, wow, that's really fantastic. Okay, so regular trans tremolo is you're taking your volume up and down and up and down. Mm -hmm. But this does splits your signal into bass and treble through some filtering. Mm -hmm. And then it's like okay. pushing and pulling between the two. So you got bass high and treble low, and then it flips and trebles high and bass low, but it's doing it in a sine wave pattern, so it's nice and smooth and undulating and warm and syrupy, and you get a little bit of phase cancellation, which makes it sound interesting, and a little mild bit of phasey. A harmonic tremolo is like a teeter-totter with bass on one end and yep. treble on the other. Uh huh. So, so Frank Daimel, uh, who's been on the show, builds great guitars in Germany, has a onboard electronic uh, called the... Uh, Les Lee. And yeah. It was oh, made in man, conjunction with good. Lee Ronaldo from uh, Sonic Utes. And um, it's a Jersey cover band for uh, <laughs> Sonic Utes. <Yeah. laughs> the Sonic Utes. <laughs> the two. <-wall. laughs> Somebody better jump on that and do that. <laughs> no, that would be great. Sonic so, what Utes. his does, it's, an, it's on board electronics and it uh, fades between the bridge pickup and the neck pickup. Whoa. So you're getting kind of the bassy and then the trebly, 
But it's it's a really cool circuit. If you have a chance, go uh, on on Dimel's uh, website, and he's got a really good demonstration video. Love oh, it. That is a cool idea. Yeah. Um, okay. Number four. Go. All right, number four. So we make a delay that has a ton of features, but sometimes I just like something real simple and nice sounding. And uh, the Mad Professor Deep Blue Delay is mm. one that I kind of go to. Okay. Right on. Um, it's PT2399, which is kind of a, it's a digital chip, but it has an analog flavor to it. And uh, it's the same guy that designed the Honey Bee, uh, Born Jewel, uh, designed it. And yeah, it's just real simple and gets out of the way. It, it cuts out some low end and some high end. So you just have these like mids trailing off mm-hmm. and uh, melts with your signal real nicely, but doesn't get in the way. Yeah. Nice. Well, by the way, we did try to get Mad Professor on. Um, they were just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk to you sometime, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe I'll we'll hit him back up. Uh, I like that. That was a very solid four on the floor. And uh, thank you for the uh, de- very deft explanation of harmonic tremolo. Bill, let's hear from you. Yes, there's, there's nothing deft coming from this side of the table. <laughs> um, Phil, Just deft, and, D-E-F. Right, exactly. Um, it, Phil went uh, very functional, very solid. Mm-hmm. I am going all vanity, baby. Awesome. I mean, this is... Uh, I, I actually don't own any of these four pedals that I have That's in mind. Okay. But I think they're all incredibly inspiring. Right. In your in your must have board, in your must have mind, this is your must have This board is on the my floor. must have vanity board. Got it. This is the one I want to pull out because it's a conversation starter. Every pedal is cool as hell. Right. It's just amazing. Right. So uh first one I've got is the, the third man triple graph. Mm. I oh, mean yeah. so cool. Yeah. So cool. The, just the functional hardware, uh the you know, the visual aesthetic, and then the sounds that you get out of it is just so much fun. That was very exciting. We got sent one from Copper Sound uh early on actually before they, they released them and they were kind enough mm. to let us have at it. We had them on the show right after that and it's great to play it, but then when you start hearing about how it was made that's a that's an appreciation yeah. thing on a totally other level yeah so are you going with the limited edition yellow or the standard One, black 100 percent the limited <laughs> edition yellow this awesome. is this is a vanity board this is the you know yeah i'm gonna do it right yeah it's nice. got it's got to look amazing yeah i like it yeah uh secondly i've got the uh ranger effects mini bar okay i mean Talk about just out of this world, never been done, so cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, the science behind it is fascinating. Um, you can put in different colored liquids to change the sound of the dirt. Mm. How cool is that? Uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a bunch of pedals in one. It's so much fun to play with. I I play guitar and I love pedals because I just love to get in there and fidget and, and mess around mm-hmm. and you, you, you land on a cool sound. And uh, it's just so much fun. So that that pedal is also really inspiring awesome. to me. Also, uh, talk to Ranger, try to get him on. Um, you know, not everybody's into to being guests and stuff, but maybe someday we'll have him on. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, thirdly, I've got the uh, Doctor No Moon Canyon. Oh uh, my god! Super limited. He still got a couple. Super cool. I it just gorgeous. It, I don't I don't need to even hear it to know that I, I need this no. pedal. It is it well there's a presentation factor too. That's another one that, that got that we were so fortunate to receive and actually we gave that pedal away. Um and so he sent it to us the the f- from opening the seal on the on the actual shipping box, the whole thing is is a total experience. And it is for a collector um or somebody who just really appreciates beyond what the sound it's making this is that's a must have i mean that is probably at the tippy top shelf that's the that's the uh the you know the johnny walker blue up there gathering dust right but don't let it gather dust play the hell out of it yep super inspirational uh and then lastly and i played this in cincinnati uh last month uh is a pedal called the plasma pedal and uh, it has, uh, that, yeah, that little uh, yeah. plasma tube. Um, it's so nasty, so dirty, 
and uh, we could only crank it up so loud at the guitar show, and we did crank it up fairly loud. But man, it's just uh, if you just want it, if you're just feeling your swag, like you're feeling super punk rock when you roll yeah. out of bed that day, that's the pedal you plug in and just turn it all the way up because it's just gnarly. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. That's a pretty radical board. That would be an amazing giveaway board. <laughs> That we'll mm, never do. Yeah. Like, I'm just, I, you know, I mean, hey, unless all those people said, no, 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 we're going to make that happen on your show, buddy. Nice. Then that would be great. But wow. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. They might get lost before it got given away. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank you, guys. That's, uh, that's a great view into, you know, it's like we got Oscar and Felix here a little bit. Got the uh, the yin and the yang going on. Uh, two different parts of a beautiful mind uh, that is Thimble Wasp here. Phil, you are handling all of the sort of the technical p- aspect of things. Yeah, that's right. Right? And then, Bill, you're handling getting him cold drinks so he keeps working. That's right. <laughs> right? So I'm just uh, kidding. That's right. That. He's, the, he, he's the real value in the operation here. Fill my camel pack, Bill, damn it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm I'm handling a lot of the enclosure design, uh, the general brand aesthetic, uh, the demos that right. you're seeing, uh, right. that sort of thing. Cool. And I, I, in speaking with you now, in, in full disclosure, I had a really great conversation with uh, both of these guys out when it was uh, we were getting kind of eaten alive by mosquitoes. I must I do remember that. I was like I went home with several welts, but we had a great conversation out on the driveway um, and getting to know each other a little bit. And I know that while both of you have your own individual roles in Thimble Wasp, you're both very much involved together in coming up with, like, what is this thing going to do? Yeah, right? the collaboration is really the heart of it and why we wanted to partner together. And, uh, you know, I had thought about maybe I could, like, make some pedals and put up a website, but uh, it's just so much more fun to have someone to bounce ideas with or take in ideas from and see what could be possible and then also have stuff that looks incredible that I wouldn't have been able to do and the the media resources that goes with uh, his skill set. So, Is it fair to say it saves you from a lot of foul balls? Uh, how do you mean? Well, like just, you know... Uh, dinkers off to the left. <laughs> like, look at this idea. You know, <laughs> Probably, <womp>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I think we end up with something better usually. And a lot of the concepts, uh, like the delay was kind of his idea to start with, and then I was able to incorporate some interesting algorithms into it. Let's start with that one a little bit. So uh, I think that's probably gotten the most coverage out there on the internets. The, uh, y- y- you want to just kind of go into that? Yeah, sure. It's it's very stunning, and so I would say that's probably the one that and catches what's it the eye the Give most. Give us the, this is the big introduction here. Sure, yeah. This is the time-lapse delay. Uh, it's an eight-mode delay, so like eight pedals in one. It's bright green. The green it one. is glowing green. It has a bright light-up plate at the bottom, so the whole thing glows like a UFO. Yeah, or underneath. like a lot of cars in Atlanta. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that was the inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it has the first four modes are more of your functional workhorse modes. So you have a standard tap delay with some variation in the tone of the repeats. You can make them darker or brighter. And then the second mode would be a dotted eighth of that same style. So you have a tap switch. You can tap it in, play dotted eighth. That's going to give you a nice, crisp, digital-sounding delay. Or you can warm it up and have it be darker repeats. The modes three and four are kind of the same thing, quarter note delay and dotted eight, but they are a tape delay, so you can dial in the amount of modulation on the repeats, and there's a little bit of filtering going on to kind of warm up the signal of the repeats, make it sound uh, syrupy. You still know all these by heart? Do you need this back? Oh, I've spent a lot of time at the computer screen, (laughs) so I know know what they do. I I borrowed it real quick, and it's nice. They've got a little legend down at the bottom, which I was a little... I, I got to admit, I, I was playing a little bit in the dark, and I was like, 
man, I don't know what all these, what are these things? I can't. And I was like, oh, there's a little thing down at the bottom. It tells me what they are. <laughs> Sneaky. Okay. Yes. Uh, so we also include a little card in the box because some of the knobs, there's a character knob that does something different depending on which mode you're on. Yes, that's super clever. Yeah. So basically on all the modes, we had something we wanted to be able, a parameter to control. Right. But you can't just name it tone because I want it to be modulation on the tape mode. Yeah. Or uh, on the one mode, it changes what the interval of the... So let's let's uh, let's walk these people through it. Because I mean, honestly, that's probably that's okay. that's the coup de gras right there. Yeah, sure. You have your mix, time, and feedback that all delay pedals right. have. <laughs> Pish posh. Uh, that's a oh, delay. You gotta regular, have them. You, you know, can't, can't get rid of them. It. But let's say you're down on uh, the standard delay. The just sure. just delay. Your character knob is going to do what? It will take your repeats from crisp, clear, digital, exact replica. To a darker, haunting. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. And then next, you got your um, dotted eighth. Yep. So that's going to function the same. It's just that based on the blinking light, your repeats are three fourths the length of the blinking light. Okay. And then your character is controlling what? There? The same. The tone. Okay. That's so still modes doing one the and tone. two. Are, modes yeah, one and two are the filter. The filter tone filter. Okay. Then you slide over to tape. Yep. And which is like, you know, the favorite thing for the last however long. Um, what is this going to do? That's going to give yeah, you a warble, so the, I Yeah, so the character knob gives you some warble. Yep, cool. just the depth of the modulation. It actually sounds pretty cool with it all the way down because the tape mode takes a little bit of lows and a little bit of highs off your repeats as well uh -huh. to warm it up and make it sound vintage-y, I think. I, I like that. I actually like to run the tape delays that I'm using. Actually, I have a tape delay set up on my HX Stomp, and I do that very thing. Mm. It just, just being on just has a little bit of motion to yeah. it. Yeah. If I were to use this delay without doing some of the crazy effects, I probably would gravitate to the tape. It yep. sounds really yeah. natural. And I, I, I would, the only thing missing was some hiss. Oh, uh, can I can work on hiss? that, yeah. <laughs> uh, hmm, if only. If only yeah. you would have called me. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. And then you've got your uh, dotted eighth tape. Sure. So that's going to be the same exact thing, but the interval is a dotted eighth. Gotcha. Instead. Gotcha. Now we slide over into Crazyville and we start doing a reverse. Yeah. So we've, it's safe to say once you go right of, of noon, you you you've hit all of the the desired delay effects that that you could really functionally desire, but now we're getting into wild territory and really really cool stuff um, with reverse. Start sure. there. Yeah, so reverse will take your it'll take a snapshot of your signal, however long you set the time for, and mm -hmm. then play that backwards. So it's cool if you play a fast lick, it will run the notes backwards that you I just play. played. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing the slow licks myself. <laughs> and if you just like play it like a normal delay, you might not even notice it's reverse. It just kind of has a cool different sound that kind of like remixes what you've played a little right. bit and can just really melt with what you've played. Very cool. And then you've got inertia. Yeah, so I think uh, Bill came up with these inertia and reactor names to go with the, the space age looking theme of mm -hmm. the time lapse. And I'm not sure, it's probably been done, uh, but I've not seen it, the inertia type of sound. It's cascading your delays up octaves as well as changing the time at which they go off. So you can use it in a really rhythmic fashion and it creates like a rhythmic pattern mm -hmm. or you can just have it be atmospheric in the background, and it creates these twinkly star repeats. And then the character knob does uh, what to yeah, that? Yeah, the character is going to be a, back to a tone control, and it will, if you run it all max, like the feedback max and the character max, I'll admit it can get a little bit noisy. It can be kind of cool, like a staticky, uh, mm -hmm. spacey kind of noise, but that'll let you take a little bit of the high end off and warm it up a little bit. Um, the feedback knob also, because each octave is going up an octave, or each delay is going up an octave, the feedback knob also affects the tone because the amount of time affects how high up the notes are yeah, getting. Just out of, uh, actually, I'll get back to the feedback knob in a second. We'll finish out here. Um, so, uh, reactor. Sure. Yeah. Reactor is an arpeggiated delay. Mm -hmm. So, 
you play your note, and then it comes back an octave up, and then a fifth, and then unity, unison, and then back into that cycle. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a mild triplet effect. Very cool. Yeah, Very cool. and uh, what we did with the character knob on that is it sounds pretty cool like that, but it's some chords just sound sour. If you know, you get into the music theory of it or whatever, mm -hmm. it, sometimes the fifth just doesn't fit with the rest of what you're playing. Right. So you dial that back, and it gives you two octaves and then unison. So mm -hmm. then you get some of the flavor and some of that uh, rhythmic feel but it doesn't sound nasty on certain chords. Good, good. If you like math, that's a great one. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and then the last one, which I had a lot of fun with, oh, um, yeah. hold. Yeah, so this would just be you push the tap switch and it holds whatever note or chord you've been playing, mm -hmm. and then you can play over top, but that's completely dry. <clears throat> and the character knob does nothing. Sorry. But the feedback, <laughs> the feedback knob on this one is uh, a little bit of a s surprise. It is a filter, and it's like a four-pole filter, so it's really intense. Wow. Uh, spiked filter, and if you move it while you're holding the cord, you can really, like, sweep. If, if you really wanted to it. do some synth-type sounds, right. you know, you can, you can get a lot out of that four-pole filter. Awesome. Yeah, and then, I, I was thinking maybe we should keep it simple. We keep that off, but Bill insisted. He thought that was oh, pretty cool. Oh, man, how cool. I think you should uh, trademark four-pole filter. Well, the, you four should. Four-pole filter. You guys yeah. should. Uh, uh, I did not invent four-pole <laughs> filters. <That's... laughs> this is like one of those pedals that you, you start messing with it, and you start unlocking, like, all these different things. This is... Probably one of the most functional pedals that I think we've had on the show, to be, like, f f honestly. Um, and I love that you've been so thoughtful about what, how you can affect these, the, each of these different modes in so many different ways. But it's still really manageable. It's not like it's got 42 knobs on it. You just have to get familiar with it, and then you can, you can totally go for it. Yeah. The feedback knob. Can you explain, uh, oftentimes we'll say feedback on a delay. Mm -hmm. I don't know that, like, for those who might not totally understand, what, what is that doing? What is the feedback knob? Yeah, so it's not, like, nasty-sounding feedback or cool sometimes on guitar where mm -hmm. it's, like, a screeching sound. Right. It is just every time there's a repeat, what's the volume of that repeat? And then it feeds that back into the input. So some delay pedals will just say repeats. What is the volume of the repeats? Okay. And it affects how loud the repeats are, but how long they last. And the mix knob also affects how loud they are, so you can blend those two parameters how you right. want. Gotcha. So you can get, with most of the patches on here, you can get it to basically repeat indefinitely. Mm-hmm. That's like Tony. So you call it, call it the Tony <laughs> uh, knob. Eight on the plate. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, probably the other thing uh, worth mentioning on here is the light plate. Yes. I love the light plate. I, as we were talking earlier, I think every it's, it's one really of your brilliant. pedals should have the light plate. I wish we had a 9-volt thing. We could... Yeah, so the light plate, uh, when you activate the pedal, it, it it lights up like a ring light around the edge of the pedal. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it if you're playing in a dark space, it's enough to light up your board or, the, or at least the pedals around it, which is kind of cool. Um, but, you know, aesthetically, too, it just kind of adds to the whole vibe of the pedal, and it just comes together into this really cool experience. It's it's uh, simply very cool, too. Yeah. It, for those who are going, like, what the crap's a light plate? In between your back plate and the pedal enclosure is a, what, about a quarter inch? Uh, Three sixteenths. You, a quarter inch of uh, of what is it, plexiglass? Yeah, acrylic or acrylic, plexiglass. Yeah, of clear glass, of clear plastic of some sort. Plastic doesn't yes. matter what kind it is. It's clear plastic, dog on it. And what that allows uh, this pedal to do is emit radiate the light out that's inside. Uh, sure. Yeah. There's a light on the top of the pedal, but what it does is it blinks the tempo of right. the repeats. So this is helpful because the light plate is always on. Right. We thought about having the light plate blink, but thought that might be a little too crazy. Yeah. That distracting. That, that mm. could be, yeah. So it's mm -hmm. nice because mm -hmm. you hit it on and the top blinking light happens to be off. You get some immediate feedback still from the light plate. Yeah. It's, it's really great. Uh, 
super duper, super duper cool. And I agree with Tony. I think that that would be a, a, a pretty fantastic feature and very ownable to like. To no, no extra stuff. charge for that, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We're, we're so giving generous. to you that grudge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, you, you got a couple other <laughs> fancy pedals here with us. And one thing that uh, we've discovered is you like to kind of hide things in your pedals a little bit, <laughs> right? Um, so if you go on our website, we talk about them. Yes. So. Yes. They're not hidden. It's like you will find them. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, as designers, you you seem to delight and go like, hmm, what if? A little surprise yeah. and delight. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll kick the space camp over to you, Bill. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one commonality between all the pedals, too, is you've noticed we use the soft click switch. I love the soft click. That's my, it's, I love it. it it's critical for me. Um, it, you know, if you're someone who plays uh, a style of music where you have some kind of heavy come downs and it's quiet and mm -hmm. you're kind of ruminating in the space, maybe you play in a you know, worship style music or something like that. And then you go to click that distortion off because you just came down and it's like a cannon blast through the mm -hmm. auditorium. Through all your delays too. Through all your delays. Yeah. It, that, that loud pop, both mechanically and audibly, um, that, the, the this is the way to go with the soft click switch. And, you know, it takes one more mechanical barrier to break out of the equation. So um, that's just a standard we've implemented. And to uh, mention, it's true bypass for those that care about the purity of mm. your signal. Okay. So it uses a relay, like many common pedals with the soft click do. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, yeah, why don't yeah. you get us into this one? Yeah. The, the uh, Space Camp is a fuzz. Uh, pretty pretty gnarly fuzz if you get it, uh, that gain going up all the way, um, but it's easy to control. You know, you, uh, the, the, the gain still comes through great, uh, nice and smooth when you have it set lower. Mm -hmm. And uh, the really interesting part here is you've got two options, a toggle switch. You've got a vibrato and a reverb. Mm -hmm. um, the vibrato is not a pedal that people often have on their board. Um, but man, is it cool. And it's different, different from a tremolo. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the pitch of the note is actually, you know, m modulating up and down. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can set the rate, uh, you can set the, the volume, and you can set the depth of that, that sine wave. I'll mention it's just a pitched vibrato, not like a vibe, unified type sound. Good, good right, uh, right, distinction there. Right. Um, What's really cool, though, and you were talking about the hidden things earlier on this depth knob, once you get past noon, it yeah. clicks over into an octave up. Yeah. And you can imagine when you've got a, a full-on fuzz going with a, that, that little bit of vibrato with an octave up, man, it just screams. It's like every note is an artificial harmonic. Yeah. It's, yeah, that, that thing absolutely is like, it's like a banshee. I mean... Mm. When you hit that, because I remember reading that, and I was like, "Well, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> I'm just gonna go over to, to Noonville and figure out what this is yeah. Do doing." Yeah, and you you have full control over the depth in both realms, right? The standard yeah. and the octave. It starts over at zero depth at noon, and then you can ramp up to 100 depth yep. with with the octave. And then uh, you know, if you want to uh, just because we could include one more option, you hit that toggle switch down to a reverb. And uh, you've got a full-on reverb, which sounds a lot like a plate reverb to me, if I was going to try and describe the sound of the reverb. Yeah. Um, it gets pretty heavy, though, um, so you can do some really spacey stuff with it. Mm -hmm. And it's a, that one is a, a, like a MXR size box, yeah? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Little guy. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, visually though, we've got a, uh, like a spot varnish on here. So there's kind of a cool printed texture mm -hmm. and then we have like a high gloss on that texture. So it's actually kind of a pain in the butt to, f uh, take a photo of because it's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's so, glo so glossy right. in certain spots, but yeah, it came out really cool. Nice. Yeah. I would say the space camp, there was a day where I was messing around in my basement with, uh, like a fuzz and a vibrato. I was like, Oh, it sounds really cool. You get this like ray gun sound. I sent a bit, a video to Bill. We've been, we've been friends for a while and, you know, done some pedal projects together. And I was like, Oh, this is cool. What should we call this? And he gives me a list of like eight names with some sketches and designs. And that was the moment I was like, you know what? We could really team up and do some cool stuff. So that was uh, number one. Well, I would say the Anvil circuit was, so that was in my two. mind first. Uh, <laughs> maybe. I don't remember when you sketched up some, some ideas about the time lapse and what if we... We may have been working on that circuit 
for the time yeah. lapse while we were designing the look of the space camp. Mm. So you know. I, that seems to happen quite a bit in pedal. Once you kind of start going on one, you start getting other ideas, and you're like, "Well, oh, let's sure. make that too." Yeah, yeah, and I, I sent you a few other ideas as well, and these are three we kind of settled on for our our starting out flagship ideas that we wanted to pour into. You hear me. You hear me talking a lot about the the looks of the pedals, and there, you're going to have listeners who are like, ah, "I don't really care. Does it sound good? That's what matters, That's right?" Jared. And that is what matters, right? Yeah. But why why shouldn't it look great too? And like, I I started playing guitar when I was 14 because it looked cool. Yeah. And I want to feel cool when I play guitar. <laughs> you well, know, it, what I mean? like it, I want my board to look awesome. Here's an interesting thing. So we've heard Jared. In the past past episodes, he's he's famous for saying this like I don't care what it looks like, I want it to I, I just care what it sounds like. However, mm. uh guess who bought a dragon I was guitar? Just say. Ah. <laughs> so like Jared's Jared I have two forget, words for you. Guitars Jimmy, Jimmy Page. Yes. But guitars <laughs> you, you you get speedboat sparkle guitars, you go gonzo on the guitars, but but not on the pedals. I just think that's an interesting yeah. thing about you, Jared. I know it's just the way I am. I You're really just don't interesting. have. I don't have a a logical explanation for that. It's just taste. Yeah, I'm just not. I'm. I am not into pedals as much as I am guitars. But you have a ton of them, and pedals? you and you actually like clicking on them. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, well, uh, so when he started out, he was just like eh, pedals, right? But I had a he, few. He has since being on the show. He's amassed wow. a pretty fair collection of awesome pedals. I have a Klon Centaur. He does. He, 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 wow. He got one. Yep. Um, anyways, uh, let's I do see. Love pedals. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> he says that every time. Uh, let's find out. Wait, what's this Bezos. beautiful, shiny <laughs> guy in the middle here? All right. Yeah. So our, our other pedal is the Anvil Overdrive. And uh, that idea i've been kind of tinkering with the circuit on the breadboard for a little bit uh for for quite a while now and finally got something that i wanted to put out in the world uh it is i would describe it as fairly bright uh you can dial out some of the highs but just the overall character is articulate you don't really mask anything sloppy about it but it will respond to whatever you give it and especially with a telecaster i find you can get pretty expressive with it. The amount of overdrive will change based on how you play the strings. And uh, I think it pairs a lot with a lot of other overdrives because it doesn't have a strong mid-range hump or a strong amount of compression. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll just thicken up. One of our, we both like to run Klon style pedals into it because it just gives it more growl, more girth. What, without... What's one of your go-to Klon style pedals? Uh, we both have one that I added like a bass knob to the circuit and made. So cool. that's what we got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, we both use this pedal in very different ways though, because Phil is a single coil Telecaster player yeah. and I'm a humbucker player. Well, I'm confused because he said it's rather bright. Now this is a person who plays almost primarily a Telecaster. So yeah. if you purposely make something you, really you bright, help me out with that. It could be that my amp is not a bass mid treble style amp. It's just master Tone. or uh just a volume knob not a master volume okay so it if you would compare it to like a fender uh from the 60s or so it would sound a little darker because it doesn't have that strong mid gotcha. scoop and that that piercing high end mm -hmm. um so i think with my guitar and i like to play in the middle pickup position it might just be my particular telly that i really like that position i've mm -hmm. tried others and it sounds a little hollow but on mine, it sounds full, balanced, uh, and articulate. Mm. And so that was kind of uh, the pairing that I designed this pedal with. Um, oh. I didn't want a ton of mid-range boost, uh, but because it is relatively balanced, it cuts a little bit of low end. And then, of course, the voice knob gives you some tonal flexibility to emphasize the highs and mids more. I find that it pairs with other guitars well because it doesn't really mask the guitar or the amp. It just kind of gives it some grit. I found, and I think actually Tony said it paired well with a Baba Ganoush. But um, anyways. Wah, wah. Yeah, sorry. Um, every, every time I see an anvil, I can't help but think of Roadrunner cartoon. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> Wile E. Coyote got smashed 
hundreds yeah. of times with an Acme anvil. Yeah. So did Tom. And he's still alive. Tom and Jerry. That's right. <laughs> and he's still every time. Yeah. Uh, so, Bill, what's Side your joke. take on the on the anvil here? You were, you were getting into that before we so yeah. rudely side side uh, t boned you there. Super rude. <laughs> um, That's no, what I do. Uh, uh, f- f- it sounds beautiful on Phil's setup. I, I understand exactly why he designed it to sound exactly like it does. It, mm-hmm. it just it's so you know he can he can slowly kind of strum a chord and it's so bright and clear. On when I plug it into my Marshall with my Ibanez with humbuckers on it. Um, it's a little tingy. Mm-hmm. So what I like to do. Well, to explain tingy. What's tingy? Well, it's a, it's it's it's, a, it's very bright on mine. Okay. It's, and you would say your Marshall is more vintage flavor. And my, my Marshall's already pretty scooped. It's okay. it's a very vintage sounding um, right. tube amp. And you got Jared's attention. He he loves the, the he's got the vintage Marshalls yeah. all over the place. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So, so you know, you combine that on top of something that's already scooped, mm-hmm. and it starts to sound a little bit brash on its own. Right. So the way I like to use it is I like to uh, stack it right after my clon, because the clon is very mid-focused. You know, it's it's very full-bodied, mm-hmm. um, but you start to lose some of the clarity in the highs. You click that thing on, and it just fully restores like the full spectrum, mm. and it sounds beautiful. So in my rig, that's how I like to run it. Yeah. I, well, I like what you guys are saying because that's what I like when stacking drives. I definitely like to find something that's complementing, mm. like one that's doing one really well, like. The low mids is really, you know, here's your big fat bump here, and then you get something that by itself. Now, what I found is by by themselves, they're not necessarily the go-to pedal, but combined, it, it just, you know, if I can find that combination, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. it's great. So, yeah, yeah, we found it. It really depends on your rig. It is the go-to overdrive for a rig like Phil's. For yeah. a rig like mine, yeah. it's the go-to stacker. And that's a that's a good way to put it. Yeah, to explain the knobs, we we're describing it as bright, and it is kind of baseline on average is a little bit brighter. There's a gain and a volume knob, and then a voice and a tone knob. So the tone knob, like most pedals, adjusts the high end at the very end of the circuit. So after you get some overdrive, then you can get some of those sharp harmonics toned down. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this goes from bright to not not very dark. Um, in fact, on a, on a humbucker, you might think it's very subtle because you don't have right. uh, much of those high harmonics to get rid of in the first place. Uh, so I wanted it to be uh, usable throughout the whole range. You put the tone on zero, and it's not a, a bunch of mud. Um, it just kind of warms it up and rounds out the signal. And then the voice knob is, before any of the clipping happens, it will boost some mids and highs. So between the tone and the voice knob, it allows you to kind of dial in. If you put the voice up high and the tone low, you do get some mid boost. Mm -hmm. If you put the voice lower and the tone up, you get a more flat frequency profile. I'm going to go on a limb and uh, say another dumb, possibly dumb thing here. Now, if it's great, I'm going to, I mean, it's a win. I'm going to take the trophy home, but it, you, what the way you've been describing to me, it feels like if that was, marketed to me as a clarifying overdrive i'd be like yes i'm all about that i think bill put that in the uh on the website really did. yeah it clar- I, had, I had it on that clarifies your tone nice yep. i didn't see that part mm. full disclosure oh, great minds okay i've got an idea for you let's hear so it. for the anvil 2 you put a switch on it one side is for bill one side yeah. is for oh, Bill. Oh, my God. Oh, That's nice. a great idea. Nice. <laughs> On to something. Yeah. Well, to be fair, Bill Dang. likes it in application. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, we actually uh, are, we are, we are working on an Anvil 2 prototype for bass. Ah, oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. We found it's... Uh, it's a cool clipping character that works well on bass, but is a little bit bright. Mm-hmm. And so the idea is to add a fifth knob that gives you some low-end girth and I won't go any further than that explaining it because it's yeah. not fully designed it's proprietary. yet. proprietary. Yeah. We didn't sign an NDA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, um, you, well, you just mentioned something you have in the, in the mix. I mean, we just went through your lineup. It's a very exciting lineup. It's got a ton of versatility. 
um, you are two dudes who clearly have a lot of great ideas and um, are, I would venture to guess, just embarking on where your potential is. So speaking of that potential, anything else in the uh, hopper, as they say? Yeah. Uh, actually, just this last week, we had a Guitar.com review, which we were pretty excited about. That. Yes. Congrats. Um, we've, got, uh, we've got an artist who is just featured in Guitar World. Uh, hopefully, we'll see some content from her. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. But Do we get uh, to drop the name on that? I don't know if I could drop the name yet. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, we also uh, are working on a, uh, another pedal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is a heavy distortion pedal. Okay. And we have probably built, I don't know, well, we've built a lot of uh, uh, other pedals to try and figure out what is the what is the tone we, we really want that yeah. works between both of our rigs. And mm. Different types of clipping and different frequency adjustment before gain and after gain. Mm-hmm. I think we have an option that we are, are pretty narrowed in, uh, something that is unique but building blocks of other stuff. And, um, yeah, I'm working on a prototype on that. Cool. And then we'll see how Bill likes it, maybe pass it around a little bit, and then, yeah, see about getting it build ready. Dig it. So, Thimble Wasp, how did you guys come up with that name? Like, tell me the whole story. Yeah, uh, that name comes from Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. And that book, in that book, Ray Bradbury in in the 50s predicted uh, the earbud. He essentially in, invented the earbud for, for listening to music. And rather than calling it a bud, he called it a thimble. Ah. And in the book, he describes, uh, you know, the main character uh, guy is sitting next to his wife and she has her thimbles in. And when you're sitting next to someone, you can just kind of hear the buzz. Uh, it, and it sounds like wasps kind of flying around your ear. Hmm. So it's that audio effect when you're sitting next to someone listening to music is, is the sound of the thimble wasps. That's amazing. I love it. So are you a big reader? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm in a book club. Super cool. Really? Uh, we'll have to talk <laughs> after this. <laughs> I don't know how to read. I'd really like to. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we talked about thimble wasp, how you got the name. We talked about your pedals. How did thimble wasp come about? Yeah, so I'll uh, get in there. I've been doing this pedal building just for fun for a number of years, probably back to 2015. Um, and kind of my thing when I got started, I have a little bit of electronics background, uh, mechanical engineer, so I took some classes, but mostly just by tinkering with like speakers and cheap amps back in the day. And so when I started, I wanted to, every, every pedal I built, I wanted to try to see if I could make at least one mod to it, like a switch or a knob or change something here and there. And that kind of caused me to study and learn the circuits. And, you know, at first it was just kind of a fun to customize it thing, but then I started to kind of see how different ideas could come about and, you know, totally new circuits that um, I could get the sound that I wanted by taking something and tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, Bill and I had been friends for a little bit and playing pedal, playing with pedals that I built. And he's like, oh, I want to build one. And so we built a couple together. And you and like then, getting in there with the with the soldering bit and all that? I, I do. I, I like it quite a bit, although um, my solders are quite ugly compared to Phil's. So <laughs> he, he will be building any pedals anyone yeah. orders. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's an art. Yeah, and then uh, getting into PCB design was kind of another skill that I needed to learn to do the pedals the way I wanted to because the circuits are uh, pretty packed in there, and so you can't really build them on perf board. Or uh, I think it's really cool when builders build pedals point to point, and it's like all the parts are just hanging in there. That's a really cool thing. It's not my uh, skill set, but having a more dense set of components, you have to have a PCB. So that was another skill I needed to tackle, and then... um, yeah, like I said, I kind of in my mind floated around like, oh, I should start selling some. I have a couple designs that I like. And then, uh, yeah, it just hit me that it would be more fun to do this with another person. And uh, like we hinted at earlier, just to have someone to bounce ideas off of, to kind of have two different angles on what guitar players like. Um, 
because we have some overlap, but some different interests as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just uh, somebody to talk about pedals with that is into it and likes it. Um, Yeah. I had had all of my gear stolen from my trunk uh, some time ago and uh, then had a bunch of kids and never got around to replacing it all. And so I I was interested in the DIY scene uh, just as a way to kind of start to build up a little bit of, you know, gear uh, to play through and uh, met Phil and he was building cool stuff. And I was like, man, this is this is awesome. I want to be part of this. So very cool. Very cool. I think it's weird that you're carrying around a trunk, but. Whatever. (laughs) 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 I I, I do really appreciate the very clear, um, I I guess, the synergy and... and I'm sorry, I threw up a little bit in my mouth from saying synergy, (laughs) but there's no other... I mean, it's it's what... That's the word. That's that's exactly the word for what you guys are doing. And, um, uh, you know... the fact that you guys are coming up with unique ideas too is is exciting, especially mm-hmm. for us. That's what we that's what we geek out on. I think the only thing worse is paradigm shift. I see. I I like that one. You still I like can. That. Th- I'll say paradigm shift of ten times over the word that I just said, of which I won't repeat. Synergy. Sorry, everybody. Hey, Doctor Brown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now, with your with with. The Thimble Wasp, the, like the company, the whole nine years, are you guys doing merch and stuff like that? Are you going to get into all that business? Uh, yeah, probably. Um, right now, we just want to get some pedals out into the world, get some response and some feedback and uh, ride that wave. But uh, I, I'd love to get merch. We're, we're starting to build up a um, little bit of a roster of artists who are using the pedal. Yeah. So hopefully that continues and... And uh, we'll do some exciting things. Yeah. Awesome. We, we got exactly two T-shirts made. <laughs> so oh, wow. We did. All right. Excellent. Uh, we, we had a trade show in Cincinnati and uh, got ourselves some T-shirts. It was a big splurge. Nice. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you so much for sharing your story and your awesome pedals yeah. and uh, the road ahead. It's very cool hearing about how you guys gathered up together and Start making cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, thanks yeah, so much thanks. for having us. You bet. Uh, Jared. Yeah, I want us to come on down to Jaredville and play a little happy game of Would You Rather. This week's Would You Rather, it's fairly simple. Hmm. And it's going to suck, too, the situation. Hmm. You're out at your gig, and you're the rhythm guitar player... For Todd's band, that the Villantinos, that, that's, that's that's non-existent. Me. That's me, <laughs> right? And the lead. So, <laughs> so uh, Todd's the lead guitar player, and you're you're the rhythm player. Okay. Uh, but he also asked you to do some leads on a few on a few things. But this awful person, that's probably the devil, said, "Hey, <laughs> I'm, you're either going to have a heart attack or I'm going to have to take away one of the strings off your guitar. And it's going to be one of the E's. So which string, high E or low E, would you rather play the gig with? Uh, or without? Without, right. So which one would you rather have on and not have the other? High or low E string? So, so to be clear, we want to find out... <laughs> You're gonna. You can only have one. You string. can only have one of the E's left on one your guitar. E. Which one is it? Is that right, Jared? That's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. If, if you have both, you're gonna have. Our and, and you're yeah, the well, rhythm player, but you need to cover some. Well, you you let's let's uh, simplify that. You're just the other. It's you're, two you're, guitars. Yeah. Guitar player, you're you're yeah. playing all kinds of guitar. Yeah. Guitar player one. Guitar Villains, player two. You know, special <laughs> yeah. guest guitar player. Yes. Yes. One night only. All right. Uh... And you have to stand in the back. <laughs> <laughs> With your back to the audience. <laughs> you have to stand in the back. <laughs> okay, uh, Tanya, go ahead. Well, I, I think the obvious choice is to drop the low E and play a la Keef. Wow. Huh. That's what yeah. I would do. Get used to that island there, pal. I like it. It's, it's, it's actually 
I mean, I've done it before. Yeah, I'm sure. And it works. Yeah. Or can I have a tenor guitar? No. Only four strings. Yeah, Play it no. like a banjo. Okay, so, so you're, you're keeping your high E. I keep my high E, drop my low E. All right. Let's find out what Bill's doing. I also am keeping the high E, and here's why. Ooh. Because when you are playing those leads, it is all eyes on you. And I do not feel comfortable with my own skills to transpose everything to that B string that fast. Mm. So I want those high strings so I can nail those solos. And then I'm just going to lay in the cut on the rhythm stuff and trust my bass player. Okay. All right. All right. See? Phil? All right. Mm. Yeah, I'm probably going to keep the low E for some uh, I like to do where you pick the low string and then mm. play the rest of the chord. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he, you lose a lot without that low E. Jared? I really, really, really liked Bill's explanation. Um, although I've experienced that plenty of times where the high, the stupid high E breaks. And uh, I can't tell you how many times that happened to me. And I was usually playing a lead on stage. So I'm going to I'm going to have to go with uh, I'm, I'm keeping my E, my high E and I'm dropping the low. Okay. I was going to go the other way, but but Bill just he ruined my first plan. <laughs> you didn't like my explanation? <laughs> what? What gives? I did like it. I did like it, old buddy, but I like Bill's so I'm just copying Bill because he made the most sense to me on that. <laughs> yeah. Cuz I was struggling to choose. Well, what about you, old pal? Well, I uh survive on power chords. So there's no way I'm dropping the low E. <laughs> I live in low E land, and uh, I the high E can just go kiss a duck for all I care. <laughs> uh, so that's what I'm doing. So that was a that was a pretty good one, nice one, guys. For you know, Phil, I think that was a a la Phil. I don't know if I want to take credit for it, but well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's your fault. So um, <laughs> that was a good one. Hey, people. People, we would love to get your for uh, your would you rather's <laughs> or your four on the floor, but but in this case, your would you rather's our 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 jar. We've run through quite a few of them, and we need to replenish. So please send those in. Um, Tony, we got some people to thank. Are they sending in would you rather's? The people that we're going to thank? Yeah, they already have most of them. Hmm. So, anyways, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> Stay out of funny land. Hey, Todd, do your thing. You know, at this point of the show, there's a special group of people we love to thank. These are our executive producers. That's right. Now, you might be wondering, what is this executive producer? More importantly, how can I become one? Quite simple. Go over to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. And check out a couple of different levels in which you can participate, become a sponsor of this very podcast. Each level comes with a bevy of great thank you gifts, things like barefoot buttons, t-shirts, keychains, picks, stickers, all the good stuff. Mm -hmm. But as an executive producer, you get all the good stuff, without a doubt. But there's one thing more. Jared? You get to have your name read on the thing. Your name read on the thing. That's what I'm going to do right now. So special, special thanks to these executive producers. (gasps) Big breath in. Tom Brazen, Darren Gregory, Doug Christ, Ken Sayers, Michael Senchuk, Stefan Lamb, Anthony Lathrop, John Anglin, John Esterly, Justin Jones, James White, Matt Hart, Bill Gola Guitars, Richard Kendall, Ty Harmon, John Jackson, Jason Rausch, Gary Cooper, Mark Garten, Elad Mazrahi, Mike D, Trevor Glenberg, Rick Calhoun, Anthony Gemalero, John Halverson, and Drew Lopez. Oh man, that's quite a Todd. Todd. I have yes. to. Uh, do I have to tell you this every week? You do. There's Please. More. There's more because I don't like to be interrupted, mm-hmm. especially when I'm on a roll. In addition to these executive producers, we have another group of special, special people. These are That's our right. grand poobas. Mm-hmm. That's right. You see, 
They live on the penthouse suite with a fez upon their head whilst listening to the podcast. I think that big house over there is kicking in right now. (laughs) Big house. Look out. So special, special, special thanks to these grand poobas. Jonathan Jerusik, Corey Nigro, David Kaminga, Saints of Sound, Cody Foster, Sean S. Yes. Tommy Manasco, Adam Johnson, Steve Keys, Tim Nowak, Tyler Rines, James Pennington, LSJ Music Company, John Williams, Johnny Morales, Mel Sanders, Bob Crouch, Sam Jett, Michio Murakishi, Martin Cliff, Hex Matos, Michael Van Zant, Andrew Dehan, Brian Robison, and John Daly. All right. We love you. Yes, we do. Thank you so very much for your uh, support. It, support. It truly means everything. We couldn't everything. do it without you. Yeah, Plain we really and couldn't. Couldn't um, do it without you. So uh, we need to find out where people can get Thimble Wasp products. Yeah, you can get them at our website, thimblewasp.com. Uh, I believe you can also check out through Facebook. Uh, find us on Instagram and click through to our site. And uh, you can get them at Morgan Music in Chicago. You can get them at uh, South End by the Sea in the U.K., and hopefully many more soon. Oh, fantastic. You can, you can message them, too, on the web. It's a great website. I was on it during the thing, and you can message them. I thought about messaging them and messing with them during the record. But I didn't. <laughs> uh, excellent, excellent. Uh, Anthony? Yeah, just head over to PickGuardian.com. Check out the stuff that I have, things you can order online. By and large, what I do is custom work. So shoot me an email. Let me know what you need, what you want, what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And Make your guitar I special. I will take very good care of you. Yes. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> I just thought of something kind of funny. <laughs> Tony, you're going to make their ordinary guitar extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. That's funny. <laughs> so, anyway. You're so funny. Uh, Jared. Uh, yes, if you have pickup questions or just general questions. What year did Homer write the Iliad? Ah, never mind. Uh, ask Tony. Just get a hold of me through the podcast. And yes, I will have my own Instagram very soon. Hey, you can send me an email, Todd at theguitarnobs.com. You can also DM me and or us uh, at Guitar Knobs on Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. Please share your four on the floors. And we'd love to get some new Would You Rathers. Heck yes. We need to say a giant, enormous thank you to Thimble Wasp for stopping by and for uh, making some cool pedals in our little town of Columbus, Ohio. Well done, boys. Yay. Thank you. You are welcome. Uh, continued success to you. To everyone else out there, have a fantastic Guitar Week and subscribe! Arg! What the? Uh. <laughs> Don't stand so close to me. <laughs> feel like mine might be a little bit yeah. on the soft side. Or... Five, four, tell anything fast <clears throat> on your feet. Three, two, one. You're missing um. out on some good beer, dude. Truly. I know, good buddy, I know. <laughs> That's such a bad joke. I love it. Uh, can we say asymmetric? Perfect for Halloween. Yes. <laughs> what are you, idea. little boy? I'm asymmetric. <laughs> 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 Anyways, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, in fact, we yeah, could probably recycle some of the ones you did back in the old days. He doesn't want to think about it. That's why. Quit whispering. Okay. I hear you. Oh. Let me get a little bit of that. What? How? No. This. 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 Anybody chomping at the bit to go? Alphabetically. All right, Phil, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you, you'll, you'll definitely oh. seem uncool. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Yeah. All right. Can, can I take a stab at, at one of my cockamamie yeah, uh, let's hear meta- your, metaphorical <laughs> assemblies? Those are both not things. <laughs> okay. Next week. Save me some for next week, old chum. Well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com 
forward slash The Guitar Knobs. Visit our website at theguitarknobs.com for all of our past episodes, Four on the Floor blog, and other good stuff. You can connect with us on social too at our Facebook page and share your gear and stories on our Facebook group. Also, be sure to check out our Instagram at Guitar Knobs. Catch you next time.